instruments first. This instrument which you see on my left hand is supposed to be held on the left hand. It's called a thumb forceps. Now there are two types of thumb forceps. The one which you're seeing here is called a toothed thumb forcep because as you can see the end has got a small opposing set of teeth. There's another thumb, thumb forcep which is not available here right now. That is called a plain thumb forcep. So the question is when do we use the tooth and when do we use the plain thumb forcep? The toothed thumb forcep is for a better grip. So it is used for structures like the skin or tough structures like opening the fascia, like the linea alba. Those are tough structures. So you need to have a good grip. That's where you use the tooth thumb forcep. This, what you're seeing here, is a plain thumb forcep. It does not have a teeth. Instead, it has got just a small thing so that you, you know exactly how much to press. This plain thumb forcep is used for holding delicate structures, like, for example, peritoneum, mesentery, intestine. When you're suturing these, you don't want to traumatize them with this. In fact, if you try to hold the mesentery with this, the moment you hold it, it will tear through. Peritoneum is very delicate. So for those structures, you need a plain thumb forcep. Okay. Having said that, for the henceforth, we are going to use the two thumb forcep because we are assuming that this is the skin. So this is supposed to be held in the left hand, and this is the correct way to hold it. The thumb should be on top. That's why, because the pressure is applied to the thumb, and that's how you hold the structures. Some people prefer to hold it like this, I've noticed. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to hold it like this. <laughs> This is how you pick up the structure. You just grab it and lift it up. You can see how you get a good stable, stable grip with this. Okay, then we come to the next instrument, the needle holder. After I've shown you the needle holder, though we don't have the hemostat, I'm going to tell you how it looks like this, but how it's different from a needle holder. First, let's take the needle holder. It's called a needle holder because for a simple reason, it holds a needle between its jaws. So these are the jaws of the needle holder. This is the fulcrum. It's called the box type of joint. These are the limbs of the needle holder, and these are the two handles of the needle holder. How to hold it? The ring finger will go in through the lower loop. The thumb will go through the upper loop. Your middle finger will give support from here, and your index finger will control it from the side. So this is how we are supposed to hold the needle holder. How is the needle holder different from a hemostat? Because in your tray, you will find hemostats. Hemostat will also look very much like this, but there will be certain very crucial differences. First of all, the hemostat, the jaws will be very long. The box type of joint will be somewhere here. The hemostat, the jaws will be very long, and the limbs will be smaller. It will be more delicate than this. And it's called a hemostat because it is meant for catching small blood vessels especially the one which is curved, the tip will be slightly curved, so that what you can do is, you can literally pick up a small bleeding blood vessel, clip it, and so that you can tie it. That's why it's called a hemostat. There are various types of hemostats, we will not go to the details. The smallest one, we used to call it the mosquito hemostats, because it is so small, it's just four and a half inches long. With that, we can just pick up a blood vessel, and that we used to call it as catching RBCs. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, so that's the difference between a needle holder. Now let's see how to hold a needle with a needle holder. So this is a curved needle with a suture, suture already swaged in it. In the earlier days, this had an eye, and the nurse used to put a thread through it, but nowadays it's all there for us. Depending on what the thickness of the tissue that you're suturing, either you hold it at the junction of the medial two-thirds and lateral one-third, or at the junction of the medial one-third, lateral two-thirds. That is the place to hold it. The tip of the needle holder should be Let's assume it, it's we're holding it here. This is a ratchet. Now, the ratchet will make three clicks. One, two, three. Depending on how tight a grip you want. Generally, for most cases, two clicks are sufficient. Generally. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold the needle here, just to show you, and you see. One, two two clicks. The axis of the needle and the axis of the needle holder should be at 90 degrees. It should not be this, it should not be like this, all these things. The axis of the two, the long axis of the needle and the long axis of the needle holder 
as you can see this is the long axis and this is the long axis there are 90 degrees and usually two clips two clicks are sufficient we don't usually need three clicks if you make too many clicks then sometimes it becomes difficult especially lady surgeons I mean their fingers are delicate right sometimes they have difficulty unhooking it in one click you know so that's why it is better advisable to do it in just two clicks sometimes even one click is sufficient if you make very loose if you just put one click sometimes what happens the needle wobbles so for all these reasons generally speaking as I said two clicks are sufficient It'll, needle will not wobble it will be more stable now let's come to the needle itself There are two types of curved needles. One is called a straight uh, um, uh, cutting needle and one is called a round body needle. Now what is the difference between a cutting and a round body needle? It is determined by the cross-sectional the appearance. Suppose I were to imagine that I have cut the needle across like this. Just imagine. And if I were to look at the cut end of the needle from that side, what is the appearance of the cut end? If the cut end looks like this that means it is like a triangle with the apex of the triangle towards the concavity and the base of the triangle towards the convexity that is called a cutting needle what does it mean it means that it is meant for tough structures again like the skin it cuts through the skin very smoothly and you will see from your experience that for tough structures you do need a cutting needle then where do we use the round body needle? The round body needle again, if you were to take a cut section like this and you were to look at it from the end, how will it look like? It will look like a perfect circle. That's called a round body needle. Where do we use the round body needle? Again, we use it for delicate structures like the peritoneum, the mesentery, the intestine, and all these structures. And if you were to try to use a round body needle for a skin, trust me, it will be very difficult because though we may think the skin is very thin, the human skin is really, really very tough structure, especially the dermis has got a lot of collagen and elastin fibrous tissue. And we do need a cutting needle for that. Round body needle just does not go through the skin. It just refuses to go, it just keeps wobbling here and there. So therefore for tough structures, we need a cutting needle. So these are the basic instruments. That leaves us with the final one, the scissors. You know what the saying is? Surgeon is the only person in this world who can cut straight with the curved scissors. <laughs> there are two types of scissors. This, what you see here, is the straight scissor. And this is the tailor scissor or the grandma scissor. This is meant for cutting thread. This is not meant for cutting tissue. Straight scissors are meant for cutting thread. It is not meant for cutting tissues. The scissors which the surgeons use to cut tissues will be curved like this. That's why we said a surgeon is the only one who cuts straight with a curved scissor. Curved scissors are used for cutting tissues. Like for example, after we have made the incision on the skin and the lineal alba, and when we want to cut the peritoneum, the surgeon is standing on the right side of the patient. So you see, suppose this is a patient. You have made the incision. The what will, if Suppose I were to use a straight scissor, then what I'll have to do is I'll have to go like this and cut, isn't it? But if the end is curved, then what I can do is I can stand here and I can cut like this. You get my point? That is why we said the surgeon is the only one who cuts straight with a curved scissor. So curved scissor is meant for cutting tissues. Straight scissor is meant for cutting the thread. So these are the basics of the instrument. You can stop it rolling now. <laughs>